G'day, my name's Chris, and well, thanks for clicking on the link. Uh, in a second, you're about to see a shorter segment from a larger show that was shot earlier this week. So if you want to go check that out, because well, I cover tech from a strong perspective around electric vehicles, solar, wind, battery power, and more and more, please follow those links and well, enjoy this video. Question, what's better than a Tesla solar roof? An Australian solar roof with integrated hot water system. Check these massive solar hydro tiles from Tractile. They've recently created and installed these systems in houses in Australia and well, other parts of the world. And importantly, have international patents plus well, the ability to actually produce and ship these in the US of A. Go Aussies! Tractile, a Queensland based company, believes that its system is superior to Tesla's because not only does their roof produce electricity from the sun, but it also uses heat to water, um, to heat up water through tubes, which run actually uh, beneath their photovoltaic panels. This, they say, has a twofold benefit. It cools the panels down and boosts the generation efficiency. Plus, also it helps insulate the house underneath. Is that actually threefold? It might be threefold. You get the idea. I've left a link to this video below, but look, I'm really impressed with the system because, well, it's lightweight, quick to install, rated at a Category 5 Cyclone and well, Bushfire rating system, and is done by an Australian company. And, and the really important thing here is that you can order it now, buy it now, get it installed now, because these things are actually for real. And right, and yet you just can't get the solar, Tesla solar roofs in Australia right now. So, well done. Good job. Do not adjust your set. I'm just making energy. So I'm guessing all of my viewers know wind turbines. Those sometimes massive things which typically reside in our countryside or sometimes in the sea, create energy from the wind. Spanish company Vortex Blakeless has created a low cost, low maintenance and well, low noise alternative. Using vortices that build up around objects, the technology harnesses the laws of physics by making these funny looking things wobble as a result of air passing around them and vortices building up behind it. Known as vortex shedding, the system uses magnets and lightweight fiberglass carbon fiber cylinders to send that like physical energy oscillating down like an elastic rod uh, around the base where an alternator converts it into electricity. Vortex Bladeless says their system has fewer moving parts, meaning that they're about 30% cheaper to make on relative terms and require little to no maintenance and produce very little sound and are less objectionable. In terms of power output, these Vortex Wobblers are designed for local energy markets where power can be used close to the point of consumption and work in conjunction with other small scale generation technologies. So what do you think? To me, they're kind of funny looking and I wonder how they really sound when you're near to them. But nonetheless, I like the fact that they are easier on the eyes, are bird friendly and might just be accepted by this bloke. What's this? New South Wales is going to go in it alone on vehicle emissions. Hold the phone. Okay. To my international viewers, what has just occurred with that little fake segment I did there was that in Australia, we basically don't have any emission standards. Okay. So hashtag Australian politics. So what new, what New South Wales is proposing here is earth shattering. It really is. Leaked to The Guardian early last week, a draft copy of the New South Wales 2020 to 2030 clean air, clean air strategy paper outlines stricter regulations around noxious emissions and CO2 standards for vehicles sold within the state. If adopted, it would mean that New South Wales will match European standards. And we all know what that means. Electric vehicles. Because good luck getting a car out of out in 2027 under these increasingly difficult standards. Now, whilst I welcome this move, I really do. If it happens, folks, I gotta say, it's gonna make it actually increasingly hard for car makers to bring cars to Australia because it will go something like this. Well, those crazy folks down under, they don't know they're a Martha or Bartha, and I have no idea what car to send them. That was a weird accent, apologies. 
it will be chaos for everyone. So how about we let our local member of parliament know that we want support around this, not at state level, but at federal level. That way, all the states and ter territories will be aligned, and that means that car makers can go, well, we basically can't sell Australians an internal combustion engine vehicle that emits carbon and yucky, noxious gas and stuff that clogs your lungs. No, we're gonna have to give them a clean, green electric vehicle, aren't we? And that is a great thing. So, hey, it, New South Wales, you do it, great, well done. But you, can, can you just do your job?